Hey guys, it's Sandro here, and welcome to part 2 of the 100 hour detail on this R32 V-Spec 2 Nissan Skyline. Now with this whole series, I've tried to document it in a chronological order starting with the first two days of the detail in part 1, covering the wash and decontamination stages. And in this second part, I'll be showing the next two days of this job, which were deep cleaning and dressing the interior, followed by polishing and protecting the wheel wells and rims. Now another area of this car that was specifically pointed out by the owner, as one of his main concerns was the seats of the car, and in particular the front seats, that were covered with a dark but shiny layer of grime, consistent with what happens with car seats when they aren't regularly cleaned, but quite regularly used. And as that grime gets pushed and compacted further into the seat, it's almost polished by the motions of sitting and sliding in and out of the seats. In truth, the rest of the interior looked like it had been vacuumed recently, with just a little dirt here and there. But to really detail this interior properly, I still needed to start with a thorough top to bottom vacuum and dusting of the entire cabin to remove as much of the looser particles as possible before the next wet cleaning stage. Once the interior had been thoroughly dusted and vacuumed, I began with the rear seats that just had a few stains here and there, and then moved on to the front seats that would require a bit more work. Using CarPro Inside Interior Cleaner with their inner scrub mitt, I began scrubbing the surface of the seats to break down the top layer of grime. That was followed by using my hot water extractor to further penetrate the cleaner and liquid into the base of the seat, and then pull it up along with the deeper grime. Now on the base of the seats, I actually had to repeat the process two to three times to get that area completely clean, re-scrubbing and re-extracting them, but in the end, they did come up extremely well. Apart from that, the rest of the interior cabin was also lightly scrubbed and brushed clean using CarPro Inside to make it a nice clean and sanitary environment, as well as to prepare it for an interior dressing and protectant. I'm in love. 
As the owner intends on reupholstering some of the interior trims, such as the dash, he decided not to go for interior coating at this stage. So I gave all the plastics, vinyl, and leather a coat of Envy Nourish to feather dress and protect them, which really added a beautiful and richer finish to the interior as a whole. My next step was giving the car another IPA wipe down, followed by measuring the paint's thickness. Now to get the most accurate reading, it's always best to measure clean bare paint, as any existing grime or even dust on the paint can give false thicker readings. And although I did measure the paint when the car came in for a quote, the readings I got after decontaminating the vehicle were even thinner, which is usually the case in the true readings you should go by. It's also important to note that the lower readings you get should also be what you base the paint thickness on, as you want to approach the paint according to the minimal paint available. 
and in this case, even the average rating of about 80 microns wasn't great, let alone the thinner readings that were as low as 65 microns. You'll also see that the readings on the driver's door and rear quarter panel were about twice the thickness of all the other panels, and after a closer inspection, I could tell that they were the only two repainted panels on the car, with the rest being all original. But as I've mentioned numerous times in the past, these thicker readings on repainted panels are deceptive readings as what you're really measuring is the original paint with the resprayed paint on top, rather than an increased amount of clear coat. And based on my previous experience, you'll actually tend to have less clear coat on these repainted panels. So all in all, this is quite a bad reading and measurement of the paint as it's going to largely limit my options to working with finer to moderate compounds and pads without an option to use anything more aggressive, as there simply isn't enough paint to work with. But even more so, it makes the stress level of working on this paint so much worse, as I know the owner has high hopes to make this car look amazing, but it's just going to be such a fine line to achieve that without burning through this dangerously thin paint. As we take a close and thorough look at the paint and its existing defects with some proper lighting, it's once again not a great situation, and also once again with the paint thoroughly clean, it looks even worse as all the grime that was filling in many of those defects has been stripped away. Now being that it's white paint, it's quite difficult to truly capture its defects and condition on camera. But hopefully you guys can see that there is a lot of swirls with heavier scratches covering all the paint with a decent amount of oxidation mixed in. Apart from that, there's also quite a bit of staining and muddy streaks that are fused into the finish. And although I was able to remove a lot of that staining in the decontamination process, the rest of it will have to be paint corrected out. There's also a bit of paint transfer in a few places and quite a large amount of chips and scuffs, as well as some stress fractures in the paint and to top it all off, there's quite a number of burn marks throughout this vehicle due to someone carelessly and aggressively compounding the paint in the past, which is most likely also the main reason why the paint is so thin. So to sum it all up, we have some seriously thin paint with some seriously bad defects, meaning that I have a seriously demanding and cautious journey ahead of me if I wish to get a high end result in the end.
My next step was masking and protecting the plastic and rubber trims, which in many cases would also themselves need a bit of restoration to bring them back to life, which you'll be able to see in the next video in this series. So with the car ready for paint correction, my next step was finishing off the wheel wells and rims to get them all corrected and coated as I knew this was going to be at least a full day's work at best. Now as I discussed in the first video, there was quite a few areas around certain panels and trims with embedded grime that would need to be polished in order to remove it. Now one thing I've discovered about the Rupes LD30 Mini Orbital Polisher is that it's an absolutely fantastic tool for cleaning paint in intricate areas, especially when used with a 1 inch microfiber pad and cutting compound. But the other great advantage is that because it just oscillates super fast rather than spinning, it's also not aggressive at all, so it cleans the paint without removing very much paint at all, and the other benefit is that it polishes the paint in those extremely thin and sensitive areas at the same time without the concern of burning through the paint. And you'll see in the next video that I used it for cleaning around quite a few exterior trims with fantastic and safe results. Bestest cameo Tried to put to rest my voice Tried to make me think I don't have much of a choice Wish me when I was down Play low tricks from behind Looking for new ways to take control of my mind
One thing I've learnt about ceramic coating rims and wheel wells is that it's all about the preparation if you want the coating to last for more than just a few months as these areas of a car just get so much punishment from the elements. Polishing and paint correction, as I've mentioned many times, isn't just for paint, but it also works on gloss plastics, and it also isn't just about removing defects, but also about deep cleaning the surface with the use of fine abrasives. And I base all of that on past experience, where I've had the coating last for years because I spent a couple of days thoroughly cleaning and polishing those areas, compared to the coating lasting just a few months without that intense preparation. But beyond that, the wheel area just starts to glow with richness and really comes alive. And you'll hopefully see by the end that it's all these little details that are so time consuming that make all the difference in how the car looks as a whole and how easy it is to maintain in the future. So after further cleaning, polishing and re-cleaning the wheel wells, they were ready to be ceramic coated. Now there's a number of coatings I use for wheel wells and have had great success with, CarPro Deluxe being one of them. I do prefer to use a foam applicator for wheels, but apart from that it's really applied like almost any other coating, which is spread over the trims or panel, worked in with several passes, allowed to flash for a couple of minutes and then leveled down with microfiber cloths. But as I've also mentioned in past videos, on certain plastics the finish doesn't streak as it does on paint, so there's no need to wipe it down, as it will be a thicker application if you don't level it down. The only reason we level down coatings is to remove streaks, which are inevitable on paint but not always on plastic and rubber trims. The wheel wells were also given a second coat of CarPro Deluxe about an hour later, which I highly recommend you do as well. I'll let you guys judge the finish for yourselves, but for me I just couldn't have been more pleased with the final result.
The last job was polishing and coating the rims. Now overall, the rims weren't actually too bad and looked fairly new, with just a layer of swells making them look a little hazed and preventing them from having that deep gloss black finish. I'll also add that these rims had a truly fantastic paint job with amazing metallic flakes and were about as good a paint job as I've ever seen on a set of rims. Now as it turns out my first test section combination using the yellow rippers pad with NV Finesse polish worked perfectly to remove these swirls and restore that deep gloss look in the finish. So I really didn't need to do any further testing. But with all rims being very intricate designs, it's always a time consuming process to polish them, even on a more simple large spoke set such as this, as you really need to use mini or nano polishers to get a good result, which in itself requires working small sections at a time. For us, it's different. Thousands of confident religions, ideologies and economic doctrines. Every hunter and forager, Every hero and coward, every creator and destroyer of civilization. Every king and peasant, every young couple in love, every mother and father, every saint and sinner in the history of our species. Now once again, the coating of choice for the rims was CarPro Deluxe, applied in very much the same manner, and I also gave all four rims a second coat about an hour or so later, and allowed them to cure overnight before placing them back on the vehicle. I'll once again let you guys judge the results for yourselves, but I actually fell in love with these rims by the end, and once I put them back on the car, together with the corrected and coated wheel wells, they just look like a match made in heaven. 
And from a more personal standpoint, it was just a nice rewarding feeling standing back and seeing this car start to come alive without even correcting the paint as yet, which we'll get to in the next episode. As always, I really hope you guys enjoyed and found this video useful. Please share this video, like, comment and subscribe to this channel to show your support for this content and I'll see you guys soon.